Hello everyone. This video is going to talk about our recent work, MMVibe. MMVibe is a millimeter wave sensing system that can accurately measure the micrometer level vibrations in practice. In modern industry, vibration measurement acts as a critical indicator for machinery health. It can identify anomalies of working condition and be used for fault diagnosis. According to some reports as well as our observations, their vibration amplitudes are usually no more than 100 micrometers. Such a tiny amplitude puts strict requirements on the measurement approaches. Traditionally, one approach is to equip a piezoelectric accelerometer on the surface of the machine. It can provide accurate results, but the intrusive measurement manner brings much deployment and maintenance costs. The laser vibrometer does not have to be close to the machine surface and also achieves a high accuracy, but it needs a strict alignment process and usually has a high device cost. Therefore, the most common approach nowadays is still the manual inspection with a portable piezoelectric based device. It inevitably induces a high labor cost and cannot achieve the real time and continuous monitoring. So, we may wonder, can we find a new approach of vibration measurement that have the characteristics like non-intrusive deployment, high accuracy, and low device cost? During the exploration, we put our eyes on wireless sensing. If we let the transmitter send wireless signals towards the vibrating target, the reflected signals will carry the characteristics of vibration signals. Recent works try to leverage Wi-Fi, RFID, or acoustic signals for vibration measurement. However, the RF signal-based works have limited sensitivity due to their limited wavelength. The acoustic-based works are not suitable for a complicated industrial environment. A promising solution to increase the sensitivity of RF signals is to decrease the wavelength. Therefore, we adopt the millimeter wave or mm wave. For the 100 micrometer displacement, MM wave will go through a phase change of 0.1 pi, while those of Wi Fi and RFID are much lower and difficult to detect. Before introducing our approach, let's have a quick review of MM wave basics. First, one MM wave device sends a frequency modulated continuous wave FMCW signals. In each short period, the signal frequency linearly increases with time. The reflected signal arrives at the receiver with a time delay. By mixing the TX and RX signals, we can get the so-called beat signal, whose frequency is linearly proportional to the distance RT. The samples of time domain beat signals are called fast time samples. We perform a range FFT to transform the time domain samples to range domain samples. For each range beam, we will obtain one sample at each chirp. By extracting the so-called slow time samples from the target's range beam, we can get a vibration signal whose phase values directly contain the vibration signal XT. Denoting the vibration amplitude of XT by X, we can calculate the maximal phase change theta with double x. In the meanwhile, the impact of xt on the signal strength can be neglected since x is very small. So, if we plot the complex signal xt in the IQ domain, the signal samples will form an arc on a circle whose center is at the region of coordinate. Note, the central angle of the arc theta is proportional to the vibration amplitude x. However, due to the existence of background reflections, we can hardly extract the vibration signal directly from the phase values. Suppose there are other reflectors in the same range beam of the vibrating target. We can rewrite the composition of their reflection signals as they were coming from a virtual reflector. Therefore, the received signal is a superimposition of a time-varying part and a time-invariant part. Since theta dash does not equal theta, we have to estimate SB through a circle feeding process and eliminate it. If we do not eliminate SB, the amplitude estimation error is very large while the frequency estimation error is quite small. 
This illustrates that we have extracted the crack signal, but the accuracy needs improvement. Nevertheless, the noises might impede the estimation of SB. When SNR is relatively limited, the samples don't necessarily fall on the circle. If the vibration amplitude is relatively large, the samples will form a large arc that controls the accuracy of the circle fitting process. If the vibration amplitude is relatively small, the samples will form a small arc which might induce fitting ambiguities. So, to improve the accuracy of the vibration measurement with MM wave, our basic intuition is to extend the signal arc. Note that the central angle theta is determined by Fc and x. Then, how can we enlarge it? Since we cannot guarantee a large vibration amplitude x, we can only count on the chirp star frequency Fc. Because R0 is many orders of magnitude larger than x, a slight change of Fc will significantly change theta 0 rather than theta. So if we can simultaneously send multiple FMCW chirp signals with slightly different Fc, we can get multiple coherent but diverse signal arcs. They together form a large arc that can improve the vibration measurement. Here we show the above multi-frequency property on real signals. Unfortunately, we find the background reflection SB also rotates with the change of Fc. So we have to figure out how to generate the chirp group on commercial device as well as how to use this property when background reflections exist. Based on the above analysis, we propose MMVibe. MMVibe mainly consists of three steps. The first step, vibration detection, is used to find the range beam of the vibrating target. The second step, robust vibration extraction, explores the above mentioned multi-frequency property to accurately extract the vibration signal. The last step, vibration refinement, combines multi-antenna inputs to refine the measurement. Next, we will focus on the second step. The first problem is how to generate the chirp group with different FC. We achieve this by regrouping the fast time samples of beat signal. For the six fast time samples shown in the figure, if we only use the first four samples to perform range FFT, we can get a sequence of slow time samples from the target's range beam and we can use the last four samples to perform another range FFT and obtain another sequence of slow time samples. The first group can be deemed as being extracted from one shorter chirp, and the second group corresponds to another short chirp with different starting frequency. It can be easily demonstrated that the generated chirp group can satisfy the requirement of coherence and diversity. The next problem is how to use this multi-frequency property to extract background reflections. As mentioned before, due to different star frequencies among chirp group, the background reflections of those chirps are also different. Therefore, the chirp samples might not fall on one circle as we expected. So, we design an iterative procedure called consolidated vibration extraction which is basically a try-and-error process to make all chirp samples fall on one circle. First, we perform a basic circle fitting to estimate the background reflection of signals from each chirp. Then we remove these background reflections by translating the circle center to the region of coordinate. Due to the estimation errors of background reflections, the translated signal arcs don't form a perfect large arc as we expected. Suppose the expected large arc falls on an intrinsic circle with radius tau. We categorize two cases that can make all signal arcs fall on the intrinsic circle. They are translating needed and scaling needed cases, where sigma l and gamma l are the translating and scaling factor of the signal arc from the lth chirp respectively. Then, we form an optimization problem to solve tau, sigma, and gamma simultaneously. 
and the solved parameters can be used to calculate the expected radius of each signal arc, which can further improve the basic circle fitting. Generally, this procedure converges after only two or three times of iterations. More details of MMVibe design can be found in our paper. Our lab experiments are conducted in a hallway of 2.4 multiply 10 meter size. We use a vibration calibrator as a vibrating target. The vibration amplitude and frequency of the metal vibrator can be manually controlled. We adopt the commercial MM vibrator sensor from Texas Instrument. The measurement settings are shown in the figure. Before presenting the numerical results, let's have a look at a demo of MM Vibe. We have built a real time version of MM Vibe based on one MM vibrator and one Raspberry Pi. When setting the peak to peak vibration amplitude to 100 micrometers and the vibration frequency to 80 Hz, we have recorded the processing results in the left figure. We can see that the amplitude and frequency estimation are accurate and stable. When setting a smaller vibration amplitude, or setting a higher vibration frequency. We can see that the accuracy and the stability of MMVibe can preserve. Next, let's have a look at the overall performance. We compare MMVibe with two existing approaches. The first one is to extract the vibration signal directly from the phase value, denoted by reader. The second one circ feed estimates a background reflection without using our proposed chirp group. Under various measurement settings, MMVibe achieves 8.2% relative amplitude error and 0.5% relative frequency error in median. Moreover, MMVibe reduces the 80th percentile amplitude error by 62.9 and 68.9 compared to circuit feed and radar, respectively. Evaluate the impact of the measurement distance in different SNR conditions. Typically, when the measurement distance is no more than 2 meters, for vibrations of 100 micrometer amplitude, MMVibe achieves an average amplitude error of 3.4 micrometer. If we draw the bar of 10% relative error, we can conclude that MMVibe can achieve a very long measurement distance under different SNR conditions. We also evaluate the impact of the vibration amplitude in different SNR conditions. We can also draw the bars of 10% relative error and find MMVibe basically can accurately measure vibrations with no less than 30 micrometer amplitude. Also, we find that the improvement of MMVibe is more significant when the SNR is lower. We also conduct a field study in a real-world steel plant in Nanjing, Jiangsu Province, China. The vibrating target is a bearing of a descaling pump. The pump has two alternative working conditions, low speed and high speed and we change the measurement distance to evaluate MMVibe. The above results show that MMVibe can measure the micrometer level vibration in practice, and its measurement is accurate and consistent when the distance is no more than 3 meters. Finally, we conclude our work. We first introduce the multi-signal consolidation model to describe the properties of vibration-reflected MMVibe signals. Based on the model, we propose MMVibe to extract micrometer level vibrations. We implement the prototype of MMVibe and demonstrate its high accuracy under various conditions. For the future work, we are now trying to extend the sensing capability of MMVibe. For example, mirroring multiple vibrating targets, mirroring the vibrations of the surface, or even extending to higher dimensional vibrations. Thanks for watching.
please refer to our paper or visit our website for details.